Hello, AP English Language and Composition students. Welcome to Lesson 30. And I think it's Lesson 30, but anyway, it's on um, the article, How Dumb Can We Get? And it is a reading that I want you to write a praise on. So you're going to have to divide it up into its three sections to write sentence two. And you're going to have to understand its purpose and audience. So let's start with uh, purpose and audience. If, if you have read this article already, and I hope you have before you watch this, um, you probably won't really look for these things. They're a little bit subtle in the article, but learning how to do so will really give you a, a greater grasp of the author's intentions. So the main idea of the article is um, not the same thing as the purpose, right? The main idea of the article is along the lines of how the um, intellectual state of Americans has gone down over the, you know, many decades, has gone down, and for different reasons. The author's purpose is something different. How are you going to find that? Well, I think that one big clue is in the third paragraph, but mostly the last paragraph. What do you get from this paragraph? There is a reference to an historian named Hofstetter, okay? So his name should be, oh, it's down here further, okay. The next paragraph, Richard Hofstetter. So he is um, commenting on anti-intellectualism in America in an article from the early 60s, but um, he was the one who documented this phenomenon and he is an historian. So we have research as support from a very reputable source. Also, the article started with a focus on the American philosopher, writer, Ralph Waldo Emerson, the transcendentalist. So we have a literary reference, we have an, a reference from an historian um, and a philosopher, and we also have a lot of research in the article, and then we end see if I can find the right page here I want page 265 to end so let's keep going So this um, last paragraph, okay, is mentioning a serious national discussion is mentioned here and in relationship to also, the new um, administration. So I'm looking for that here, yeah. So at the very end of this final paragraph, it is past time for a serious national discussion in this year of a change election, 2008, where we eventually would get uh, Barack Obama as president. So this helps us understand the purpose of the author. I'm giving you a hint here. I'm not going to write the third sentence for you. But what is the author's purpose? It has a lot to do with this right here. And then what is the author's audience? All right, so sentence four goes back to that third paragraph and the very first beginning of the first paragraph and the ending here. All right, once you have sentence three or the idea of the purpose in sentence three, you can go on. Who is going to accomplish that purpose? Uh, serious national discussion. Do you think that there is going to be, do you think that this article overall is exclusionary? Is it addressing uh, a certain subset of the American population or everyone? Who is going to accomplish this national discussion? You can't really answer that about the audience until you know the purpose, as I just said. So you determine who the audience is going to be. 
um, and you determine whether it's all inclusive, everybody is being addressed in this article, or it's more an exclusive group um, based on the type of information in the article and who will accomplish the purpose. So you determine that for sentences three and four. And don't forget that sentence four, you're supposed to address the author's tone. You don't have to say the word tone. But what is, don't just use the word serious, but, um, you know, but see what, what is the, her, her attitude towards this topic and so on. And put that in there. Okay, now, for sentences one and two, mainly let's look at sentence two. I'm going to give you a major hint here for sentence two. You want to divide the body of the article up into its three parts so that you can get, not that that's always the case, but it's more customary, that there'll be three supporting ideas. There are here. How can you figure that out? Well, we have this word here at the bottom of the first page. I think that might begin our first section. But you're, it's, it's a little confusing in this article because if you go back up to the top and you think that the author has identified the three sections here with anti-intellectualism, rationalism, low expectations, it's not exactly the case. Two sections have something to do with this, something to do with this, and the last section has something to do with this. So that's my, those are my hints for you. And let's look where the, the first section starts right here with the first. And the second section, first section is pretty long. Well, the first section has uh, the focus on anti-intellectualism, but related to what force that is causing the anti-intellectualism. It is focused on, in, uh, on page 263, I think it is, and it's actually right, ends right before. This. Right. What is the force that's prompting the anti-intellectualism for the first section of this article? That's your answer right there. Okay, what is the force that is prompting the anti-intellectualism for the second part of the body section of the article? Let's look for that. Right, it's actually right here. So it's on page 264. Okay. On page 264, right here, the second important anti-intellectual force propelling a downward uh, shift in thinking in, in intellect and the part of the Americans. What is it? All right. This is the force right here. So this section is not nearly as long as the first. And then the third section. It's, it's actually named the third section, and I'm not going to, I already kind of gave that idea to you, it was in the first paragraph, uh, but it's mentioned right in here, okay? So, you do need these three sections and their, their ideas, but you also need the techniques related, the predominant technique in each one of the three sections. Now, what is the predominant technique in each of those sections? They're simple rhetorical strategies for two of the sections that start with a C. And the one other section, it's an argument uh, technique that you must always have, and they usually have it in the third body paragraph of an argument, so there's a clue. So that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about right now for this article, though you should read it and understand it, and then you can write about it much more.
um, easily. The first sentence, don't forget that you need to have a that clause, all right, uh, with a subordinate clause beginning with that. And the second sentence is one entire sentence. Do not stop it with any periods and don't have a run on. You can use semicolons to break up the three sections, and that is one way. But another way is to have parallelism of sometimes prepositions that begin each section. She does this, that you won't start with just that simplistic of an entry for the second sentence, but um, she does this by, and then you'll have one section of the three of the second sentence. Then the second part of the second sentence you would have to start again with by, and then the third with by. If you do it that way, you can't shift and change words. And it would be something like by with a gerund after it, by stating, and then the second by contending, or something like that. So, you, and you, so each section needs the idea of the section plus the technique that predominates in that section. So I've given you lots of clues, so that is your assignment for today. Thank you.